what is up boys and girls how you guys all doing excuse the uh, engine noise me and j Val and captain mosby jones just out here hitting up the salmon troll what's up guys i think it's gonna be a fun day a fun adventure we're gonna uh hit this evening troll for a little bit and then camp out uh, we dropped some crab traps and we're gonna try to hit the sunrise troll again so stay tuned with us i think it's gonna be a lot of fun you're watching the bite pot of the day we're just giving it a quick check and it's not empty doesn't look like a lot of monsters but there's definitely a bunch of males in here oh man it's, it's heavy Woo! look at that you guys that is a bunch of crab actually so we're gonna grab a gauge and gauge a bunch of these. Uh, a few of them look like they're short, some of them look like they're females, but uh, we're gonna check out what we got and uh, we'll probably show it off real quick. There's a gauge in that bucket underneath it. So, what about fish? All right, you guys, so there's a bunch of these littler ones that are definitely not quite keepers. We'll give it a quick gauge on that. See, he's just short, but when you see he's only just short, it means that we're gonna have some keepers in there, so like this one right here that right there is a creeper keeper crab stoked on that he's not huge but that's a keeper and we're gonna keep him this one's a keeper right here look at that that's a nice good keeper that's number three right there keeper male crab here's another one that looks like a keeper sweet right there that's a keeper crab Here's another one that looks like a keeper. Yeah, look at that. There's a keeper crab right there. Here's a crab that looks like it's probably a keeper crab. There's another nice male. Bunch of females in here. That's a female. This one looks like it's a nice good size keeper. Maybe it's just short. Nope, that's a keeper crab. couple more females and one more Whew. we're gonna go ahead and let that one go because we got a lot of small keepers but that one is questionable I think that one's not a keeper so bye bye this trap is pretty empty now so we're gonna throw some fresh bait in this trap and then we're gonna go check the other two but right there is seven decent keeper crabs so if nothing else me and j Bal are eating good tonight Woo! yeah bud so trap number two didn't really have any good crabs in it so we pulled it we're gonna move it to this location now dropping it into the water and trap number three is somewhere over here we're gonna try to find it and uh hopefully there's a bunch of crabs in it so Oh, yeah, that is it. Yeah. Yeah, with a little red. I can be I'm so and I don't wanna take a turn in the world. I go J Bow's pulling up trap. J Bow's pulling up trap number three right now. It was out here in some deeper water. 
with less competition. So hopefully it's got some good crabs in it. That's a nice big monster. That's a keeper for sure. Look at that beast. You don't even have to look at that. Oh yeah. One more big nice monster, which gives us eight crabs for our first pull. Not the sleigh fest that you guys might be used to seeing from us, but that's plenty of crab for me and Jay Bow to eat for the night. We're just out here doing a little coast camping and we don't really need to go home with 200 crabs. So part of why we had had these crabs that were getting away on this last one is because this bag really i think that doing a cage and a bag combo is the way to go the bag allows the crabs to sit there and eat for a bit and the cage keeps an extra bait for your long soak the crabs eating and chewing this up is going to cause a lot of that juices and those chicken um blood and all that oils and stuff like that those chicken oils and the blood and the juices of all that bait to flow around and that's really going to cause the crabs to come rushing for your trap more but if that bag or your cage is in range of this door so that when that door swings open it could get caught up on it or the bag could slide all the way over to the door that's going to often cost you some crabs because the crab will be hanging out right here eating or the bag will keep that door propped open and some of the crabs will be able to escape so making sure that your uh your bait is secured very tightly to the center of your trap is definitely going to increase the amount of crabs you catch all right pulling the traps I imagine this one's gonna have some crab in it. It's it's the beast. Oh, baby. oh that's not no crab. Woohoo! We got crabs. Look at all of those crabs. There's a crab, there's a crab, there's a crab. Oh, funny. That one's a keeper, no? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's fully a keeper. Big female, that looks like a keeper right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, nice big that's male. A crab. That's a nice big crab. This is going to be another big male on top right there. caught a ton of crab i don't even know how many keepers but a bunch of them so we're stoked we're gonna throw this trap back in and we got two more traps set to go check out right now Yee what's the verdict hey there's some crabs a couple more keepers in that trap couple more keepers in that trap. We're gonna go grab the next one. It's getting real cold out here, so we're ready to get off of the bay and to uh, go set up a fire and have a nice little camp somewhere. Probably two more good crabs in there. Yeah, that's a keeper probably, right? Yep. All right, third and final trap of the night. Two more big keepers. Right? Oh, that's a female. At least one more big keeper then. One more nice crab in that trap. Not the uh, hottest crabbing of all time, but we're doing pretty good. We got some full buckets. We're going to go set up a campfire somewhere, cook a couple of these things off, and call it an evening and get back fresh in the morning to some more crabbing. So, hope you guys enjoyed this little quick session of just getting out onto the water and getting ready to go. Boom! Crab, 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 crab.
Alright guys, here we are. We're back at the bike kitchen. We got a little bit of garlic. We're gonna we got some salt water boiling back on the campfire right now. We're gonna throw the crabs in there once it's up to temp. Right now we're just gonna get some lemons and some garlic chopped up and we're also trying out the Zatarans shrimp and crab boil tonight just to like see what that tastes like. Let's get going. Water is boiling, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab these crabs and throw them into the pot. Did you put a little of this? Yeah, I, I did in there a little. Already? I did a little. All right, that sweet. In there. So here's our big old crabs. This one ripped off this one's claws. This this one is a little bit of a dick. Look, even though he's smaller than this one, he kind of beat this guy up a little bit. So we're definitely gonna eat this one because he's a little beat up, and we want to eat him before he starts to pass. And this one earned his execution because he's a he's kind of a jerk. Dick. Generally speaking, you want to cook your crab uh, five to 20 minutes. Um, right in that 10 to 15 range is pretty golden. It kind of depends on how many crab you're dropping into a pot and how much water and how hot that water was. If you have a large pot of boiling water and you drop that crab straight into that boiling water, it's not going to cool that water temp down very much at all. And that crab is going to enter hot boiling water in, and in five, six minutes, it's going to actually cook all the way through. If you take a small pot that has um, not as much water in it, and the water's boiling, and you dump like 10 crab in there, they're gonna cool that water temp down quite a bit, and it's gonna take a lot longer for that water temp to get hot enough to really start cooking the crabs. Um, I guess it could take even longer, depending on exactly you know the conditions of your water and your crabs, but 15 uh, minutes is kind of your golden zone. You're probably gonna have just lightly overcooked your crab um, if you go any longer than 15, and there's a good chance it's gonna be undercooked if you cook it for any less than 10 or so, but you know, five to 20 minutes, depending on your water and your crab. One of the ways you can really tell, because that's kind of a large range, five to 20 minutes, one of the ways that you can tell is just break off a single leg crack it open, see how the meat inside that single leg is. Another way that you can tell is that the crab are real heavy when you first put them in there. There's a lot of other water in the meat of the crab and the guts and stuff. And when you cook it all, some of that starts to escape from the crab and you can then kind of like feel how much lighter the crab actually feels in the pot. And that's a good sign that they're starting to get cooked all the way through too. And of course, the classic turn bright red. If your crab is still a little purple or hasn't turned that totally bright white and red color, probably not cooked all the way through and once it gets there you'll you should be able to tell see our crabs are starting to turn that classic red and white color I was talking about that's what we want and I can feel they're getting a little bit lighter these crabs have been in here about seven minutes I would guess and I think they're getting real close to being done I'm gonna go ahead and submerge that one a little bit more so that it actually cooks away any minute we're gonna go ahead and pull those crabs Looks like our crabs are finally done, guys. We just scooted them off of the heat right there a little bit. The water was boiling away. And when the water's really boiling away, that's one way that you could tell the internal heat of the crabs has gone up because it's no longer cooling down the water and the whole pot has got to that boiling temp. So these crabs are definitely done. This butter is also looking definitely done. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this butter, and carry it over, set it next to our cutting board here where we're gonna get our crabs laid out in a sec. And then we're going to grab those crabs up out of there with some sticks or some knives because we don't have our tongs. Get in there with those knives, J-Bell. This is safe. This is how they taught me how to do it. I don't know if you guys could hear that loud rumbling that came in right as we were pulling those crabs out or even the rumbling that you can hear over off to the side of me. We're in a highly duned 
uh, area. Right off to the side of me, there's just a whole bunch of giant dunes. And right over there by the not beach. Doomed. Doomed. Not doomed. Not doomed. Dunes. It's a very duned area around here. But uh, because of that, there's just quads and little uh, dune buggies and go-kart type things just driving around all hours of the night. Sometimes they're covered in all kinds of giant light bars and stuff like they're at a festival or Burning Man or something like that. And um, they're basically rallying by us at all hours. You can just hear just running all over the place. So. Um, I'm pretty used to uh, engines and generators and rumbles, so I can sleep through it. But if you weren't the kind of person that liked to sleep through that, it'd be pretty uh, loud around here. Just listen to that. Look at how awesome and beautiful this little feast spread is here. We got two large Dungeness crab, just two, a bunch that we caught today, but we don't need to eat more than that tonight. Whole bunch of lemon chopped up, just a squirting lemon on top of fresh Dungeness crab is the bomb. And then we got some garlic butter right here to dip them in. Pretty classic and simple. Crab dinner, garlic butter, a little bit of garlic bread. But still, it's it's pretty much as good as it gets as far as sitting down and eating some food with the homie camping. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this bread and I'm just going to cover it in some garlic and some butter because it doesn't need much more than that to be good garlic bread maybe cover it in a little bit of a seasoning of some kind. But I think that garlic and butter is really all it needs. I'm just gonna take this and throw it straight onto the grill. Um, a little garlic fell through, probably a little butter fell through it too, but you know, it takes. Look at this beautiful little fire we got rolling. We got some garlic bread on. We got these two crabs that we just cooked up. Some lemon slices so we can squirt a little lemon on them crabs. We got some garlic butter. I think that it's going to be a bomb bomb feast. What do you think, J-Bal? I think that if you can have two things that you're gonna take out on the coast with you to have Dungeness crab, if all you're gonna bring this in a pot to boil some crabs. The lemon, Tabasco, it's my favorite, it's my favorite combo. I agree. I agree, it's a really good combo. I am partial to garlic butter. But if garlic, you have butter, garlic butter, lemon, but if you don't have the garlic Tabasco, butter, the, 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 the Tabasco and the lemon just like in the trunk, you're, you're in. Right there is now two good to go, ready to eat crab. All right, you guys, we're ready to feast. Two nice, cleaned up, ready to go crabs. Our garlic bread, some lemon slices to top it off, our garlic butter, and of course, the Tabasco sauce and a little Zatarain's. Zatarain's, Zatarain's. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit more garlic butter on this garlic bread because I just kind of gave it enough to, uh, to give it a little flavor while it cooked and I saw a lot of that garlic fall off. Oh yeah. Now let's uh, crack crabs. Fucking. Cheers amigo. Cheers. You know, you guys, I can't think of a much better way to spend a day than driving around the bay with a friend in a little boat, trying to catch some seafood, and then at the end of the day, catching that seafood and eating it. We went and dropped a couple of crab traps today. Why the crab traps were soaking, we did a little driving around and a little fishing. We didn't catch any fish, but really dropping some crab traps and doing a little camping and just getting out of the city was really the point of the day. And um, I had a blast doing that with Josh. Tomorrow, we'll uh, go catch a whole bunch more crab and uh, then we'll get into a little salmon fishing. So don't go nowhere. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You're watching the bike.